Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for accepting our interview. Um, we know that this uh, unsuccessful uh, attempt could, uh, took place in Turkey, but we are mostly interested by geopolitical consequences of this event. And my first question would be about the Russia Turkey relationship. How would it influence? Because a lot of experts are talking about closer ties between Russia and Turkey now. Well, um, I think some people might be um, <coughs> uh, confusing the time frame in which this all took place. Um, the decision by Turkey and Russia to uh, to bring back their relations to normalcy as much as possible was taken, of course, before the coup. Um, and uh, in these about seven months that Turkish-Russian relations were in crisis due to Russia's reactions, rather, for the Turkish part, uh, we were more cool-headed, uh, and we knew that uh, <coughs> we what we did was not wrong. Um, during those seven months, it was abnormal not to be speaking with Russia. We were the only ally in NATO, uh, the only country in Europe in this area, including Ukraine, mind you, not speaking to Russia. So now that uh, abnormality is behind us. And this is something our allies appreciate, and I'm sure Ukraine also understands and appreciates it, because it's an additional channel uh, to speak with Russia, to have uh, express uh, our views, and they might, they might be different, different views from Russia's on Syria, Ukraine, of course, and other international issues. So I think this is how it should be looked at. So geopolitically, Turkey is the same Turkey people now. I mean, had the coup been successful, and you know, I don't see that as a probable scenario really, maybe then people should have been uh, concerned, but uh, not now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you do know that Russia and Ukraine have some conflicts, and do you think that this uh, uh, non, uh, return to normality, as you call it, with a relationship with Russia, will influence Turkish uh, vision and Turkish perspective on what's going on in Ukraine. I mean, first of all, Crimea, would mm -hmm. Turkey uh, question this uh, issue? And uh, what's going on in Donetsk? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously not. Uh, and because what I, what I say is uh, Turkey going back to, again, a normal dialogue, a dialogue with Russia, uh, on being speaking terms in Russia, doesn't mean forgetting what happened in uh, Ukraine and Crimea or what um, we believe uh, what that is wrong in this whole affair. And this we've been saying before Turkish-Russian relations uh, went to this crisis mode in the last seven months. So our position in that sense will be the same, of course. From the day one of the cr uh, crisis in Ukraine, um, <clears throat> we, we were on the uh, side of Ukraine uh, for its territorial integrity, unity, uh, sovereignty, uh, in inclusive democratic process, hopefully reformed, hopefully again successful in its um, uh, <coughs> approaching uh, Europe. All this, of course, including uh, Crimea uh, and very dear to our hearts are Crimean Tatar uh, brothers and sisters who deserve to live uh, with the highest of standards in their historical homeland. Those, uh, <clears throat> these are the fundamentals of our uh, policy regarding Ukraine, and they will not change, and all parties know about this. Mm. Speaking of the economic aspect mm -hmm. of this story, uh, there are talks about the uh, Turkish stream now, these talks which were abandoned for many uh, months, mm -hmm. uh, f starting from this uh, plain story. And now, uh, uh, do you think that uh, this uh, Turkey uh, stream will happen, will be continued? Uh, I think, I think the, um, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the situation is similar to one before the crisis. There are different projects being talked about. Um, we don't have, um, we have some um, this and that statement here and there, but uh, <clears throat> the fundamentals, um, of these projects haven't been um, <coughs> uh, started and there are apparently competing ideas. People talk about the North Stream uh, 2, for example, and that was the main concern, that continues to be the main concern, of course, in, uh, in Ukraine and uh, in large parts of Europe, I know. 
uh, it's too early to talk about anything concrete. Uh, we, are, uh, we, we will probably go back to where we were before the crisis with Russia. But even there, things were uh, not clear. We will see. We will, you know, Turkey, um, like Ukraine, needs to diversify its uh, energy resources. Like Ukraine, well, now Ukraine has uh, using um, um, the market in Europe again, Russian gas, but through uh, mostly through the Russian, uh, the um, European market. We are uh, <coughs> also quite a lot dependent on Russia. So our idea is to diversify. Uh, so we know what we need. Uh, and uh, uh, Turkey is at the same time becoming, in many ways, has already become a, a hub, energy hub. Uh, this could be used in an optimum way, which would benefit Ukraine too, it's possible, uh, and Europe uh, because of our uh, uh, central location and before, because we've done a good job of, uh, uh, I think, uh, <clears throat> realizing some of the projects that we have from the Caspian, for example, and now maybe more from the M Middle East and uh, possibly from <clears throat> the Eastern Mediterranean. We've managed these well. Uh, we'll continue in that, in that respect. But the, it's difficult to say something concrete about the Turkish stream. Uh, as you know, um, this Turkish stream is mainly intended uh, to go to Europe. So it's in many sense uh, a decision that Europe has to make if it all comes to that.